Hi everybody, it's Robin with Uniquely Robins. Um, we're doing the last half of the garden tour. Uh, this area here that is all paved used to be grass, um, but our driveway is really, really narrow to get in and you really couldn't turn around. So we brought in um, loads and loads in the back of the pickup truck of rock to put in here. Um, I do need to get some weeding done. I did a little last night, but there's shit coming up everywhere this year. Um, this is the archway. I think this is where we ended yesterday. I have two um, lemon cypress here on either side of uh, the archway. And I just love these little guys. They're so cool little trees. And they're in pots and they do have um, drip irrigation run to them. Um, right down here this year, I just got this um, honeysuckle which I'm hoping will climb up around this. It does have a couple of clematis on each side. Um, this is one of the flowers. It looks kind of like the other clematis, but it's not as um, dark purple as it is, and it's not as full. Um, so I'll be probably fertilizing them pretty good next year. Um, this one here, see it's starting to seed out, so I can gather some seeds from that and replant those down there too. That'll make it a little thicker. Um, Again, we have the uh, uh, nepeta here. This is a, a purple nepeta. Is it a nepeta or a veronica? I think it's a nepeta. But just the bees just love it. I mean, they are just all over it, which is wonderful. And then these, of course, are annual petunias down here. Um, they've actually doubled in size. I um, have a another hydrangea bush over here that i do believe this one was blue when i got it but we don't have enough acid in our soil so they come out a uh, pink color um, i can get some stuff to amend the soil to make it um more acid more ph in it um so that or less ph in it so that uh they will turn blue um, that's just really hard to do when they're in the ground because you have to do that so often to keep them up um, it is getting a little bit of chlorosis right here. You can see the, the veins are really dark green and the, the leaves are turning a yellowy color. Um, it is on drip and it just kind of looks like this in the afternoon. In the mornings, it's beautiful where I have the drip run at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So after it runs, it, it perks up and looks so much better. Um, I don't think it's getting quite enough water. I may have to run another um, line just to it so it gets its own water. Um, and I did um, put some iron tone in it because that's what chlorosis is, lack of iron. Uh, so I did put some iron tone in there and that's just a slow thing. It just takes a while for it to rebound. Um, I have a hookera down in here, a little strawberry hookera that I think I'm going to have to move because this is just a beast here. Um, I need to come and cut it back cut it way back um, this fall. It's a little too hot to do it right now, but this fall I will be cutting this way back um, and we'll see what happens next year. Uh, it's just mainly foliage color. Um, and again, the yarrow is flopping over, but I just don't want to take it out yet or move it. It's too hot to move it right now, but I am going to move it right back in this area back here um, and try to get a staking system up for it so it'll be a little more upright and I'll cut it back uh, so it'll flush out new. And I have some uh, catmint here, which I just recently cut back not too long ago, so it's starting to flush back, and I'm hoping it will come up through this ring so it doesn't flop over because it doesn't get quite as tall either. Um, there's some ground cover down here. I'll have to look at my tags because I'm not sure what this ground cover is or this one. Um, they were just little teeny tiny plants last year when I put them in and they have grown this much. So, um, and look how massive that is. It just went crazy, but I'm hoping you know, it'll fill in the blank spaces. It kind of keeps down on your, uh, weeding and things like that. Um, these are double lilies back here. I'm hoping my phone doesn't get too hot again. Um, but those are double tiger lilies back there. Um, throughout here and this is one of my Japanese maples that I've waited forever to get um, love this tree I just love the uh, 
the lacy like leaves on it is so pretty i just put this in late last year so yeah it's it's getting there and it looks really healthy so that's good um on this side over here we have another one of the chocolate bushes um which kind of came up all by itself um this window box here i have coleus i'm just going to pinch these flowers off because most coleuses i want for the leaf color and if you let them bloom um, they don't grow as big but if you pinch just pinch the little top um, flowers off and it, and it encourages the bottom to, to grow more um, then I have some um, lime potato vine in there and a red potato vine in the middle um, there's Gracie down there she loves to garden um, this is a peony. So this one is a red peony. Uh, I have another peony back in there. I believe that one is white. And then a peony here. I think that's red. Um, this one didn't bloom this year, and I'm not sure why. So I'll be checking into that. This one did. It, it had blooms on it. Um, of course, it's done for the year now. Um, have this grass here which is a green and white variegated which I think is just so pretty um, I actually thought when I got that it was an annual last year but it came back so this is kind of between the garage and the, the um, neighbor's fence here uh, we did have a, a fence like this one back here which is not so pretty to look at but it let a lot more sun in so I've been having to move things around because since they put this up it shaded my backyard so much more so I need to move some stuff around. Um, I believe those are uh, gladiolus that I planted two years ago and have come back up the last two years, which normally you have to dig those bulbs up. So that was kind of good that I didn't have to. Um, there's a delphinium back there that's really not doing very well. I'm gonna have to move it to a sunnier spot, I think. And another volunteer chocolate plant. The only problem with the chocolate plant, if you get one, is because they do like to reseed themselves everywhere. Um, of course, you can tell what they are when they first pop up, so you can pull them out. Um, but I haven't been able to get out here this year in the garden as much as I normally do, um, just for medical reasons. And so things have just kind of, I just kind of let it go this year, let it grow. Um, I have a hosta down here. Um, there's another hookara. Um, I can't remember the name of that one. I love hookahs. I just, they're so good for shady areas. Um, have another one of this ground cover. Um, this just popped up. I'm not sure if anybody knows what this, um, is. I just thought the leaves were so beautiful. I just left it and, you know, let it go. Uh, it's not something I planted, but, um, I just think it's gorgeous. So if anybody knows what it is, can let me know. I would appreciate that very, very much. Um, but I think it's really pretty, so I left it. Um, there's a, uh, lavender there. There's another lavender down the other end, too. Um, they're not doing so hot over here. I think I'm gonna have to move those. This is a spirea bush, and it gets some really pretty little flowers on it in the springtime. Uh, there's another lavender there. Um, but I'm trying to keep it cut back a little bit. It needs to be a little trimmed up now, um, since it's done blooming just uh space wise because i don't have a very big backyard um have a rose bush here it was like little tea roses and this one evidently was grafted because it gets the little peachy flowers on it right there and down there I also gets yellow on it um the same with this one here um it's becoming more peach than any yellow on it now which is fine by me i love peach roses i think they're gorgeous uh this is the little tree uh that I had in the pots by the garage last year. Um, for some reason, it's not very balanced out there. You'd think it'd get the same amount of sun on both sides, but it really doesn't because the one did, that one did fine, the other one died. So I moved him out here, give him kind of a per permanent spot. Um, excuse my little mess right here. I have to get that taken care of yet. But I have this purple hookah back here, which I just love this. I think he's so gorgeous that this grass is just humongous and taken over and here's a big long weed in there that doesn't go so <laughs> we got one over here too so let's pull them out uh here's another hookah 
and another uh, kind of a Japanese maple tree. This one has the, the traditional maple-like leaves on it. Um, you got something was eating on it. I did put some bug and slug out here. I think we have slugs really bad around here. So um, I just popped a couple of um, watermelon plants in here to see if they do any good back here. I don't know. This area here is in in the progress of being worked on. Um, haven't gone very far with it yet. I just want to see how those would do. This is a red wagilia. It's called a wagilia bush. A beautiful, beautiful bush. Um, I just got this one this year too. Um, so that's why it's not very big, but it has really pretty little flowers on it and the hummingbirds love it. So that one should get pretty good size. Um, I think it said four to five feet tall, tall and wide. So it'll fill in the space back here pretty good. Um, you have to excuse the mess over here because I'm blowing this off. Um, this is the patio uh, that I made last year. Um, had one of those free forms that you just poured the concrete in and made these um, little square areas. And then um, I covered it with uh, the uh, cement like mortar stuff and swept it down in everywhere and sprayed it down with a hose and it kind of connects it all together. Um, this is a 12 by 12. We have a tent that we normally put up here. But with them talking about the cicadas being so bad this year, we never put the tent up. Um, my husband said something last week about doing it, so we may still put that up. Because it's a nice place to sit out here. And um, one of the great things about it is this house behind us, um, and well, I guess it's apartment now. It used to be some kind of a foundation thing. But hardly anybody ever comes in this backyard except for the deer. You see deer out here. I have lived in the country most of my life. And I've never seen a deer in my yard. And I see one out here almost every, at least once a week, there are deer back here. So um, we came around the corner one day, my granddaughter and I, and there was one standing back here and she was just all excited to see it. So, yeah, I mean, it's beautiful back here. Um, this flower bed right here um, is my grandson's. I gave him this space and he told me what he wanted and we went out and picked out plants to put in here course Grammy gets stuck weeding it which it needs to be done again I just weeded it a couple weeks ago but it needs to be weeded again so uh, we do have that problem normally I put a big thick layer of mulch every year on all my flower beds uh, but my husband sold his truck because it wasn't running right so he sold it and we haven't gotten a new a, a different truck yet to go buy it in bulk um, and be careful when you buy mulch in bulk um, I bought some um, out right on the outskirts of town is where I normally buy it from and it was I've never had a problem with it I went to one other place to get it uh, one year because I don't remember why I went there they were on sale or something but <laughs> beware of sales because it was full of clover and ever since then I have been pulling clover out of my flower beds so you have that problem if you don't take it easy there here's a hosta and this one's blooming um, same way with hostas if you um, cut their uh, spike their bloom spikes back it will make the plant itself larger um, but I love the blooms on them I just think they're gorgeous and the, and the butterflies and the bees love it so I just let them I let them bloom um, this one here this lily is getting ready to bloom it's, it blooms a great big red lily on it um, this rose bush back here my grandson had to have he wanted a, a rose bush so we got this one it's one he picked out um, full of thorns full of thorns <laughs> it is a beast when you go to cut it back um, and I keep trying to train it up on this trellis but it keeps wanting to lean and go up this pole um, so I need to work on that again I just a couple of weeks ago it has grown all of this just in a couple of weeks uh, because I had it all attached here to the trellis so I need to, to keep training it to go up that trellis um, this is a hibiscus and it is getting ready to bloom and if you know anything about hibiscus they're about the last thing to bloom in your garden so um, that will be blooming here real soon I believe that one's either red or orange great big I mean hand size blooms on it beautiful another hookah there another hookah there you know I love hookahs they're so pretty um, and columbines I have uh, I think I skipped over that back there because I just uh, took the seeds off of it. I have one columbine and I, I did gather seeds this year so I can grow some more last year. 
or next year. I think they're so beautiful. Um, that's the hydrangea back there he just got last year. We just put in. Um, so it's looking really good. It didn't have any blooms on it this year, but i um, hoping that is just because it's working on growing. Um, also back over here I forgot was um, I have another wisteria. That is what this here is. This is a wisteria, which I'm trying to train to go down this fence line. Hopefully we'll smother out this vine that keeps wanting to grow up there from their yard. Um, oh, he, <laughs> I think that's a cucumber. Yeah, that's a cucumber there. He planted back here just to see if it would work back here and uh, something's eating it. Uh, probably the deer because the deer do come in our backyard sometimes. Um, I think I posted a picture on Facebook once of them in our backyard around the kids' table and chairs. Uh, this is another hosta there, another hosta here. A lot of the hostas um, are kind of volunteer hostas. My neighbor had a bunch in her patch, and they will spread, and they spread over in my yard, so I just dig them up and put them where I want them. <laughs> and she's fine with that, so. Uh, this is a lilac bush, a lilac tree, I should say. Um, it has been in here, I think it was either the first or the second year we moved in. So it's been here like six years and has not bloomed once. And I've done everything they told me to do. Um, there's even a thing online that says if you come out here and beat it with a broomstick and tell it to grow blooms that it's supposed to do it because it's supposed to jerk it into motion or I don't know uh, what the, the reasoning behind it was. But I have tried everything, including that. My neighbors probably thought I was crazy, but... I was willing to try anything to try to get it to bloom. Um, I mean, it's getting taller and it, it looks good. It doesn't look like it's eating by anything. So I don't know if it's not getting enough sun back here. Um, and some people say that it takes seven to 10 years for a lilac to bloom. So hopefully it doesn't take that long. My bush out front bloomed the first year I put it in the ground. But um, here's some more lamb's ear, which is not looking so good right now. I need to um, cut that back and uh, let it rest I guess till next year um, we have this is one of those trees I was telling you that um, the tags were all off of so I'm not sure what tree this is um, I know I ordered crepe myrtles um, crab apples I, I'm not sure it looks from the leaf of it actually it looks kind of like a mulberry but it's not because I didn't order any mulberry trees but um, if anybody knows what this tree is, please let me know. Actually, there's two of them, and I've entwined them together. So they'll they'll spiral and grow together. So kind of an experiment. We'll see how that works. Um, this is a lime um, hooker here. He's doing pretty good. This lamb's ear looks like it's going to encroach on him. Somebody's trash in my yard. I hate that. Um, this bush, I don't know what it is. Um, it gets these little white flowers on it. It's been here since we moved in. Um, I just kind of left it go because it was, has pretty little flowers on it in the spring. Uh, this beast here is another wisteria, which I'm hoping to train to go down uh, both sides of this ugly fence. Um, it's a tree. It's going like a tree, but they get, um, I guess, their base actually gets really fat i mean a wisteria does um, and grows from that that's why they're so easy to, to turn into a tree form um but i need to work on this guy getting him trained to go down he's starting he's starting to go he's getting it in his head what he needs to do um this here is lamium it gets these um well actually here's some blooms on it which just a little late for but um little purple blooms on it's really pretty um uh, have a big old dandelion over there I need to get out of the ground so, and that's the thing with gardening I mean it's a never-ending job I just we did this these whole things just a couple of weeks ago <laughs> and look how big that is already I mean it doesn't take long especially for dandelions they grow so fast um, this is a cherry hookra and this is another one of the lime hookras um, this is the same thing as the other bush on this side um, it was here when we got here, so I don't know what it is, but it has pretty little white flowers. Butterflies seem to love it, so I just leave it alone. Um, and back here, I think we either have aphids or um, I can't 
can't think of what those other um, bugs are called that make your leaves skeletonized like that. Um, something's eating at it. I did put some stuff around it. Hopefully that takes care of it. Um, I can't think of what the name of the word, what the name of the bug is <laughs> right offhand, but he's, he's tearing up my um, plant over there. So I don't know. This here is cat's pajama. Or, um, no, cat mint. This is cat mint here, and I'm trying to get it to go up through this hoop. Might have to get a bigger hoop, because it does get pretty big, but once it gets so tall, then it wants to flop over, so I try to keep it contained a little bit. Um, we actually have two butterfly bushes right here. I planted two of them together, so they fill in this, this space pretty good. Um, they have some beautiful, beautiful little flowers on there, and those look really pretty when you dry them, or press them in a book. They're just so tiny and dainty. I just love them. I believe the other one is a deeper purple. For some reason, it's just getting ready to bloom. Um, these down here, right in here, are Lady's Mantle. And when it rains, these hold the little water droplets and they look so beautiful. Um, it took me a while before it stopped raining enough I could come out here and put them in the ground. So they're looking a little rough right now, but, but they'll be all right. A lot of times I will get plants um, at the garden center that are on clearance because they're not looking so good and They're still good plants. They still have life in them If you bring them home and plant them and take care of them, they will look beautiful for you um, This little variegated bush back here seems to be getting a little lanky in the top I need to trim it up a little bit. I'm trying to keep it as a small little ball in there I don't want it to get humongous a little bigger than it is to fill in that spot, but I don't want it huge So I try to tr keep that trimmed down I ordered some seeds, um, I think from eBay or Amazon, I'm not sure which, um, clematis seeds two years ago. And that is what this is here. And it, I've never seen this kind of clematis before. It's different. And I just think it is beautiful. I mean, and it has got grown so much this year. It used to be, I'm gonna spin you, hopefully not too fast. That arch used to be right over here, and it had a little flower bed around it. Um, and that's when I planted them, and I dug them up and transplanted the, the arch and both of those plants all at the same time and moved them over here. And I was afraid I was going to kill them, but I didn't. I mean, they just, they love this spot much better. It's more, they get more sun over here, I think. So they're doing so much better. Need to train them to go up, upward a little bit more, but I kind of like the wild... The wild look of the blooms and the wild look of, you know, just them. I just like it. I think it is so pretty. This is where I feed my birds. So you always get corn stalks trying to grow and sunflower seeds you got to pull out. But you got to feed the birds, which I need to fill up my feeders. I haven't done that yet today. Um, but this is the, the table and chairs I made for the kids. It's all made out of concrete. Um, I do need to repaint it this year. It's it's looking a little sad right now, but we'll get it repainted and sealed up a little better. I um, have a few of the little tiger lilies back here, and I'm not sure whether they came from my yard into her yard or her yard into my yard, but um, she did apologize once for her hostess coming over here, and I told her, don't ever apologize for giving me free plants. <laughs> because if I don't like where they're at, I'll just dig them up and move them. And this is one of, of them, and he is just huge. Love, love, love this plant. Um, there's another hookra, but you can tell I love hookras. Um, this plant here, um, oh, I thought maybe I had a tag down here. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe that's the tag right there. I thought I saw one, but I guess I'm seeing things. No, nope. but that's the plant that's in the middle of that urn up by the back door that is just getting swallowed up so i need to dig it out and bring it out here with this one um so it can be by his friend maybe he'll grow better and um, this is just kind of a makeshift teepee that me and the kids made together and uh the plan is that next year in spring we're going to plant some sweet peas around it so they can climb up it um we saw them do that on garden answer and he just thought that was the coolest thing so we decided we'd make one um, we didn't have any bamboo sticks like she used. We just made ours a little more rustic with sticks from the yard, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. 
it and he likes it so you know that's all that matters the kids like it so that's good this plant back here in the back um, when i purchased it the tag said it was a um uh, a fire uh, can't think of names right now for some reason a, a, a fire bush it was supposed to be a red bush in the fall. It was supposed to turn really, really deep red. Well, it is a type of a lilac because it bloomed this year and it bloomed lilacs, uh, which is fine by me. I love lilacs. My favorite scent in the whole world. So um, if I'd have known it was a lilac, though, I'd have planted it up closer to the house <laughs> so I could smell it. Um, I, kept, I kept telling my husband that I wanted a weeping willow. And he said, well, you have to live next to water to get a weeping willow. And I said, no, you don't. You just have to make sure you water it good. Um, so, last year online, I found this little guy here, and he is a weeping willow, and he was about this big when I got him, so he's growing good. He's, he likes this spot back here. It's um, kind of shady here, but he seems to be okay with that, but he does get plenty of water because I do have, as you can see, the drip line running through there, which usually this is mulch so much you can't see the drip line, but I haven't gotten to this bed this year yet. I need to get out here and weed it. See the clover, and that's from the mulch that we got last year. It keeps throwing up this clover, and I have to keep pulling it out to try to get rid of it. Um, so, you know, a garden is a never-ending thing. If it's not one thing, it's another. Here's another hooker here coming out of this pot. Um, I wanted to show you. I can get back in here without stepping on anything. This vine right here is my nemesis. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of a vine it is. It's some kind of a, a ground cover or it likes to climb up every single thing. But this is what our whole entire backyard used to be, was just mud and that. So I've yanked it all out. And so far, other than this piece here, I'm doing pretty good. I still have a little bit down here to get out, um, but it's a never ending thing. Every, every year it's something. But that's what I like about it, is your garden can always change. You can move stuff around. Um, here's uh, some hookers back, or not hookers, some, uh, ooh, that's got ants on it. Um, hope they're not biting ants. Some hostas. I have a bunch of hostas back here that I had moved from over there against the fence. And if I back out of here a little bit, without falling over, this is the little boat sandbox my husband made for the children, which I need to empty out this year. I just haven't had time to do much this year. But that needs to be emptied out and cleaned up. And he did make a lid to go on it. They just never put it back on. But they have left a mess out here. Normally, they're good about picking up their toys, but last year they just didn't. Um, here's a, the one of the first plants I ever put in my garden. Because this, this is a huge tree. Let me show you this tree. This is a huge tree when we first moved in the people next door had said that um or the people that used to live there they're different people now um said that branches fall out of it a lot and it has taken the power out a couple times so we called a tree service to come in and trim it to trim it up really good and um they told us how much it would cost um and then we get a phone call from a guy up inside our tree <laughs> on his cell phone telling us that there's a big crack up there and he has to take a lot more off than he thought so it's gonna be double the price wow god was good because <laughs> it just so happened that that week my husband won the drawing that they have at work they um everybody puts in so much money that wants to be in the drawing and then they draw a name and the person gets that money uh, so he had just won that money, which was just enough to cover this. <laughs> so that was good. Other than I'm sure he wanted to spend it on something else. But um, he would personally love to take this tree completely out of here. But that would cost us a fortune. This is a huge tree. Um, my nephew does tree trimming for a living. And he came and looked at it. And he said, Aunt Robin, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't even touch that tree. <laughs> He said, that tree is so old and so huge. I, he's, there's no way I would even go up in that tree. So, he's here for probably till we die. I know my husband would like to get it out of here because he'd like to add on to the garage, but I don't see that happening. 
but I mean, it is just a huge, huge tree. It is probably, um, it's probably six feet around at the base, at least. I mean, it is huge. But there's a lot of little squirrels that live up in there, so. We don't, aren't gonna mess with it. He'd like to, but we're not gonna. <laughs> um, this one's just full of blooms. This hosta here, and this grass, um, I put this in the first year we we lived here and um, didn't realize it was going to get as huge as it does. And I have never cut this back. Um, <coughs> I hear you're supposed to cut them back to the ground in the fall so they can come back all fresh and you won't have all this brown in there. Um, and they're supposed to do better. But it seems to be doing just fine and I don't want it to get much bigger. If it got bigger back that direction toward the tree, wouldn't be quite so bad. But he hangs out pretty good out here. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful... I mean, look how and when it blows, the wind blows. It's a nice, breezy day today. And the wind blows it, and I just I just love to sit back here and look at it. It's got that variegated um, leaves on it, which I just... They're just beautiful. So, so that's it. I mean, I don't have a very big yard. Um, and my husband keeps saying, and you keep making it smaller because I keep cutting out places for flower beds and I'd like to make this one back here, um, come out a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to move, um, the kids table and chairs over here by the patio. I'll probably just mulch all this area and put their stuff over there because it's really heavy to move every time I mow. And, uh, me and my weed whacker are not on the best of terms right now. It keeps wanting to tangle up and driving me nuts, so... Um, it's either go my hair and pull it by hand or move them when I mow and um, I can move the stools. They're really heavy, but I can move them. But the base I can't do by myself. It's just way too heavy because it's the whole thing is concrete. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to fill this in with some really pretty mulch and I'm going to move that over here and then that wood jillia will grow up around it and it'll be really pretty. But the kids love that table. They love to play on it. But um, again, if anybody knows what this um, tree is here or vine or plant, let me know because I would really love to know what it is. I just think it's beautiful and the leaves are so pretty in flower arrangements. Uh, the rose flower arrangement that I made, I put some of that in there and it sits, it's lasted a long time because it sits right where our air conditioner blows out. So it sits in there and... Um, it seems like when it gets cold in there that the little leaves they just come together and close up and then when it's not quite so cool they'll open back up it's just really cool i like it i don't know what it is even if it's a weed i think it's beautiful as long as it's not going to spread weeds all through my garden <laughs> but um yeah grace loves to come out in the garden don't you gracie you like to come in the garden yes she will come out here to go to the bathroom and you will be out here forever because she wants to smell every flower in the garden. And when I was weeding back there, I'm weeding along, pulling weeds and throwing them behind me so I can rake them up later. And uh, every time I, I turn around to see where she was and make sure she was still right there with me and she's dragging the weeds back in there as she thinks they should be plants that are in the garden. So she tries to help. And if I take her in the vegetable garden, I don't have any lettuce in there right now. I couldn't find lettuce plants this year. Um, but if I take her in there, she'll eat the lettuce. She loves lettuce. Um, these are um, truffle of pink gomfrina. I know yesterday I said I couldn't remember the name of them. It, it just came to me. <laughs> these are truffle of pink gomfrina. But this chocolate plant, like I was talking about it coming up everywhere. If you see, look, everywhere. You just have to keep pulling it out. <laughs> I'm probably going to regret it in the end, but it's such a beautiful plant. And I'm hoping it gets big enough right there to kind of shroud the air conditioner because that's kind of ugly. But, um, yeah, I have this area over here, which you have to excuse what it looks like because it's total wreck right now. Just kind of keep my pots, my empty pots and uh, training forms over here right at the moment. But I need to get in here and weed again. Uh, there was a tree back there that we cut down. It was bothering us and the neighbor, so we cut it out. And it just keeps wanting to grow back, so I had to get some stuff to really get it out of there. Um, 
but I have put, if I have a pot from last year, I empty it out, I do it back here. Um, I was, my plan was to, in the back, make a compost heap back there, which I still may do. Um, but look at all this clover from that mulch. I mean, it just, it's ah, maddening. Now you pay that much money for mulch, it should be good mulch. Um, but I need to tear all this out and I think I'm going to put some weed fabric down at least for um, a year or so, try to kill off that um, stuff there. And then I'd like to plant melons and stuff back in here, but I'm really not sure that it gets enough sun. So we'll just have to trial and error and see what we can do with it. Um, not sure what we can do with it. Maybe end up building off the side of the garage and making a, a little shed back here or something, because we could use a shed. Uh, we have to play Russian roulette, seems like, with the cars and stuff in the summer. And the end of fall, so we can get the, my husband has a Corvette and I have a Miata, um, older cars. And uh, then we each have a motorcycle and we have the black car. And we used to have the truck, which always parked out front, so it wasn't a problem. But we have to move, you know, the cars and around to be able to get the motorcycles out. And it's a pain sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I think I need to dig this plant here out and take him back there with the rest of it before he dies completely. Because he was really full last year. Now he's just kind of straggling because he's not getting any sun from this um, hookera. But I love my hookeras. But... Everybody have a great day. Um, show show the ladies below some love. Show your family some love. Look at all those blooms on my um, cucumber. We're gonna have some nice cucumbers. That'll be good. Um, yeah, have a great day. Hope you all had a good 4th of July weekend and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.